In today's video, we talk about football in Comoros. The country has fought its way up from the bottom and is competing in the Africa Cup of Nations for the first time this year. Come with me on this journey. I promise you won't regret it. Today, I'm telling the story of football in Comoros an island nation in the Indian Ocean that has been independent from France since 1975. But there has been no peace since then, as three coups led by the French mercenary Bob Denard plunged the country into crisis again and again. After a fourth coup in 1995, he was then brought to France, but the country hardly stabilized. Further coup attempts caused some political instability and the country's economic strength is among the lowest in the world rankings. But today we want to talk about a country that has an incredible enthusiasm for football and is incredibly proud of its national team, despite many difficulties. And in the meantime, this small country with only about 850,000 inhabitants has every reason to be self-confident and it has recently set a big exclamation mark in African football. Before we get into today's story, I have a small request. I would be incredibly happy if you share this video, tell your friends about it and create even more awareness. The more people who follow our tour through the football world, the more fun it will be. Thank you all and now let's get started. The Comoros Football Federation was founded in 1979. Even then the national team played its first international matches at the 1979 Indian Ocean Island Games. In the same year, the Comoros Premier League was founded, which is still the highest league in the country. It is run at amateur level and there are always minor structural problems with the scheduling of the competition. The record champion is Kwa Nord de Misamuli, but the last title was more than 10 years ago. The current team of the moment is US Silly Maju, which has won the title in the last two years. But before I talk more about the league, I'll let my today's expert, national player Nabil Ali Mshangama, who has played in the league for a long time himself, take the floor. I'll give you a short introduction to the 25-year-old. The midfielder has played for record-breaking Coin and Vulcan club in his career. In 2017, he was nominated for the national team for the first time in the AFCON qualifiers and was substituted against Namibia. To date, he has played six times for so-called Silicans. But now for his take on the league. Comme je l'ai dit auparavant, nous avons un statut amateur. Les instances ne sont pas encore assez professionnelles et assez bien structurées qu'elles pourraient l'être. Beaucoup d'incohérences dans beaucoup de domaines comme la planification annuelle des différentes compétitions par exemple. Certains clubs de D1 comme ceux d'Omoroni, Mitsuji ou encore Domlé et d'autres tente de se structurer et d'être plus professionnel car la plupart de ces clubs ont participé aux compétitions continentales et ont pu apprendre de ces expériences. Nabil has already mentioned the international appearances. Let's take a look. The champions have a starting spot in the preliminary round of the CAF Champions League. So far, no team made it to the first round. The closest was Fomboni FC in the 2019-20 season, when they only lost to Côte d'Or of Seychelles because of the away goals rule. Let's go down a level to the CAF Confederations Cup. Here the cup winner starts in the first round. Comoros are still waiting for their first success in this tournament as well. Here it was Vulcan Club in 2017 who only missed advancing because of the away goals rule. You can see that there is still potential for development at club level. A look at the squad at this year's AFCON also shows that, because none of the players play in the domestic league. This also brings us to our next big chapter in the story, the national team. As I mentioned earlier, the first international matches took place at the 1979 Indian Ocean Games. The association only became a member of the African Football Confederation in 2003 and then joined FIFA in 2005. There were small appearances at local tournaments, but the first official international match was the 2006 FIFA Arab Cup qualifier. A match against Djibouti was won 4-1, but it was not enough to qualify. In 2007, the qualifiers for the AFCON 2010 and the World Cup 2010 were on the agenda. 
Those were played together and in the first round the Comoros suffered a bitter and clear defeat against Madagascar. However, the island nation does not allow itself to be pushed down by such setbacks. Nabil once again makes it clear what football means to the people of the country. Le football a encore un statut amateur au Comoros. C'est le sport numéro un devant tous les sports. Il a une place particulière dans le cœur de la population. Les matchs qu'il sera entre quartiers ou entre clubs de D1 sont l'occasion de montrer son appartenance et sa fierté de l'enfant de 5 ans à la grand-mère de 70 ans. Il y a deux types de joueurs. Les plus performants sont adulés par leurs supporters et peuvent vivre un certain temps malgré le statut d'amateur. Mais attention, car les supporters comoriens sont très exigeants et intrusifs. As one of the smallest associations, Comoro certainly doesn't have it easy, nor has the infrastructure always been ideal for development. However, that great tangible love of football can sometimes work wonders. The team then took the next step in 2015, when they made it through to the first round of World Cup qualifying for the first time, winning against Lesotho. It was also the first exclamation mark from coach Amir Abdu, whose name is inseparable from the national team's upswing. He has been coaching the national team since 2014. By comparison, Nigeria has had seven different national coaches in the same period. He was supposed to be Henry Stambouli's assistant, but Stambouli withdrew, which was in retrospect lucky for Comoros. Abdu not only led Comoros to a big boost in the FIFA World Ranking, he also achieved great developments thanks to discipline. He searched the French leagues for players with Comorian roots and year after year molded them into an even better unit. You want to know how much respect there is in the country for the coach? Listen to Nabil. Nous revenons de loin et le travail accompli par le staff du coach Amir. L'apport des joueurs de la diaspora depuis 7 ans nous a permis d'avoir une visibilité et de faire progresser cette équipe nationale qui nous tient tant à cœur, on peut dire ça. Nous ne sommes pas encore au niveau des grands du continent, mais cette fois-ci, nous pouvons manger à leur table. On a encore beaucoup à apprendre car nous sommes encore une jeune nation du football au regard de notre affiliation à la FIFA en 2005. Then on the 14th of November 2019, the big day for the country. A 1-0 win in Togo qualified the team for AFCON 2021, which as we know was postponed for a year because of Corona. But now they are playing with the best teams in Africa. Who could have imagined that a few years ago? Because of Covid, the team could not meet in Comoros for a long time. But before the AFCON, the time had come and the journey to leave was full of goosebump moments. The squad for the AFCON consists mostly of players who play in France. One prominent name is certainly goalkeeper Ali Ahamada, who was considered a great talent in Toulouse and has also played for France under 21s. At the moment, however, he has been without a club for some time. Another exciting player is Faris Selemani, who plays for KV Kortrijk in Belgium and is one of the, if not the most important player there. It remains to be seen how the team will perform at the tournament, but the country can be very proud of what it has achieved. It is hard to imagine the euphoria and ecstasy on the island if they make it through to the round of 16. Nabil also believes that AFCON qualification is definitely not the limit. En ce qui concerne le football comorien, tant au niveau national qu'international, je souhaiterais que les clubs soient plus performants, que les compétitions deviennent plus relevées, avec une participation régulière dans les compétitions internationales, car cela voudra dire que le football comorien a progressé. Comoros, a small country that is currently riding a great football fairy tale. It has been a great honor for me to tell this story about football there. Feel free to write in the comments which country interests you next. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and share the video. The country deserves the most attention. Thank you all and I look forward to seeing you when we explore the next country on our football world tour. See you then.